about to happen. And the Lord began to say some things to me earlier. And I remember when I was a little boy, this particular scripture came to me. I didn't know where it was at, but God made me remember. And maybe I'm going to find the giant that I saw come out. And he put one foot on the land and the other foot on the ocean. And immediately this began to happen. Begin reading there. I believe that is verse 7, if not chapter 10, verse 7. Read. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel, which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. Somebody say amen. Now, it's nothing like an upset stomach. And some of you know what I'm talking about when you seem to have eaten the wrong thing. And whether it was good, you found out it was bad. Whether it was spoiled, but it was not quite right. But at the same time, you ate it. It was so enjoyable when you began to eat it. But you said, I'm going to eat this. And the moment you begin to eat it, you begin to enjoy it. But moments later it hit the belly and when it hit the belly all of a sudden you thought that you couldn't keep it down no longer because it started raising itself up and what am I trying to say you see sometimes you take the bitter with the sweet and therefore sometimes you find people that's actually eating this and eating that and everything you eat is not necessarily good for you. Sometimes you can have too much of any one thing. And yet, when you have it, it makes you think, well, what did I just eat? And then I want to blame it on, I know what it is, but in actuality, you don't know what it is. Because when you see the angel, when he stood up there and he had the book, and it was open, he was talking to John. He said, John, now go get the book, <laughs> and I want you to eat the whole thing. That's just like me and you preparing ourselves to do what thus saith the Lord. What we better know is being the will of God. And anytime people begin to do the will of God, it is not a comfortable ordeal when you're doing the will. Everybody that say they want to do the will of God is going to be proven, it's going to be tested, and it's going to be tried. And therefore, people say, I love God. Say, why callest thou me Lord, Lord, and do not what I say? And if you love me, he said, you will keep my commandments. For my commandments, they are not grievous. And so I begin to understand that God is trying to beckon us and get our undivided attention and bring us closer to him because immediately the enemy's job is to steal, kill, and somebody say destroy. But what is it he's trying to steal? He's trying to get the book out of your hand. And the book is nothing but the word of God. And any time when you see people that's eating the book, they meditate on the word of God according to the book of Joshua 1 and 8 when he said, this book of the law should not depart from thy mouth. Y'all didn't hear that, did you? Should not depart from thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate day and day and night to observe and to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success. Somebody say thank you Jesus. But let's deal with some e-commerce. Go to the book of Revelations and we're going to go back to chapter 13 now. And as we go to chapter 13, I want you to see this because these are the times that try men's souls. And anytime you see people being tried, they're having 
different type of parties that's going on. And anytime you go from one extreme to the next, you can find yourself at the wrong party. Yeah. I'm looking for somebody that's going to the party where Jesus Christ is going to be there. But as we read here in the book, right there in the book of Revelation, chapter 13, I believe is verse 13, read. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Uh-huh. Now, one thing I'm trying to get to is that they're going to come to a place where they neither could buy or sell. Did we see that? And once they get to the place where that they can neither buy nor sell, they're going to have difficulties unless they have the mark of the beast. Now, what is more important to you in this world as you would see it and know it even on this his holy day? People are so self-centered talking about others, bashing this one and hating that one and don't realize every idle word that men speak shall they give an account of because there's an appointed time that we're going to stand before the almighty God and the angel going to say now here's the books now God is an accountant I don't know if y'all know anything about having accountabilities because anybody that will have an accountability, that's going to be a service where they're going to have to render their most reasonable service to the Almighty God. But I, I don't agree. I don't believe in this. And I don't believe in that. And listen, I don't care if God has chosen one particular people over another people. But I know there's going to be a people out of every nation and out of every tongue. That's going to be before the Almighty God. Now, I want somebody to tell the person next to you, neighbor... God is not a respecter of persons. God is going to have to himself a people out of a people. And when you start seeing these people, you're going to begin to say, now, what is this? And something that John said, he saw a number that no man could number, a numerable number. And they were all standing before him and worshiping him. And so when you begin to think about that, where did all these people come from? They came from generations, from generations to generations to generations. And they were all in the presence of God. And here we are, not worried about it. I'll make it if I do. I'll make it if I don't. Baby, you better make it. Because if you miss this bus ride or this train ride, if you miss this jet ride, you ain't going nowhere but to hell. Sometimes people say, well, God knows me. God says, wait a minute, excuse me. He put his finger up and say, I only know them that gave me their hearts. Everybody's heart is not in the place where it's supposed to be. Because there's venues here where some people are beginning to say that God knows me. And God says, I know of you, but I never knew you. The reason why he would say, I never knew you and depart from me that work iniquity is because people took too much of his time saying but not doing. And the Bible says, 
But be ye doers of the word and not just hearers only. That's why James 1.22 tells us those doers are those that have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb and have made themselves ready to meet him. So e-commerce come by. <laughs> you can't have none of these materialistic things down here because, see, if you ain't got enough money, and even if you got enough money, you're going to need the mark to spend it. What kind of credit card is that? Three scores and six. Six, six, six. Number either in their forehead, or y'all ain't talking to me in here, or in their right hand. And therefore, people are trying to say, well, I got all I need. I got all I want. I got my Gucci bag. I got my mink coat. I got my diamonds and my rings. I got my Bugattis. I got my roses. Well, baby, you're going to need them. Because none of that stuff you came in the world with and none of that stuff you're going to take out. Naked I came into the world. And naked I go out. But blessed be the name of the Lord. So I said, okay, God. Okay, God. I understand now. Whatever you want, dear God, you can have it. Because God said, if I strip you today and take everything from you tomorrow, what are you going to give me? There's a time that we call accountability. And sometimes people say, well, I don't have no reason to be accountable for nothing. Oh, yes, you do. Our lives is at stake. God wants us to surrender our lives wholeheartedly to him. But God, you don't know what I'm going through. God says, I've been where you're going. I just want you to understand it's a different plan. Now, when God begins to speak to you, it seems like everything is just naked and open before God and whom we have to do. And it's obvious that when everything is naked and open, we begin to say, why God? Why me? He say, why not you? I picked you while you was in your mother's womb. Look at all the incidents and the accidents that you went through. And at the same time, he said, I brought you. I didn't let the devil kill you. Because he sure enough tried. But my angels stood in the way. Can I get a witness here? My God. What did he say in that 13th verse? Revelations chapter 13. What did the 13th verse say? And he doeth great wonders. So that he maketh fire come down from heaven. On the earth in the sight of men. Now people were greatly deceived. Because of all these wonders, look at him. He got to be the one. He got to be the God from on high. The devil is a liar. The devil is a deceiver. I somebody say he's a deceiver. And his deceptive points is to get a hold of you. And his greatest task is this. Manipulation, intimidation, and domination. He's got to either draw you in to throw you out. And he strips you from everything that you are to take you to a place where you could never exist again. Oh, pastor, that couldn't happen. Oh, yes, it's happening right now. Here we are. Fascism is coming on our land. People don't even know what fascism is. Ah, when the enemy comes in, he speaks his very voice to try his best to bring you down from where God has raised you up. But I want you to know, God is saying, I'm coming to set the captives free. Now, there's some people up in here that say, well, I'm free for now. But tomorrow... You don't know what it's going to bring. If Ukraine could have known. If Jerusalem could have known. And a lot of these other countries could have known. The devil is coming to lock down on the people of God, east, west, north, and south. 
but there's a people that's being raised up out of a people. And they don't mind lifting up the name of Jesus. Romans chapter 1 verse 16, Apostle Paul said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. People have stopped witnessing. They stopped sharing. They stopped caring for one another. They're saying, eat, drink, and be merry. And the Lord said, when I come, shall I find faith in the land? He said, they're going to be eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. But he said, I'm still coming. I want you to know he's coming back for his bride. Now, even now, somebody should know that his bride is in the dressing room and she's preparing herself. She's getting herself adorned and she's getting herself ready because when he calls her forth, she's going to come forth without spot, without wrinkle and without a blemish. Somebody say amen. She's not going to be a murmuring bride. She's not going to be a complaining bride. She ain't going to be a backstabbing bride, but she's going to be a holy woman of Zion. She ain't going to be no fornicating bride, but she's going to be a bride that's going to be mixed with nothing but the spirit of the almighty God. Virtue is going to fill her, and the devil is mad because some of y'all are being prepared to be just like her. Can I get a witness here? Ain't going to be no whoredom in heaven. So you can't let anybody touch that sacred body of yours. You've got to keep your body holy because he's holy. And he says, be ye holy because I'm holy. Say if the Lord your God, somebody shout glory to God. Somebody say hallelujah. I don't know this, this is going to help anybody, but I believe that. E-commerce is right there. They won't be able to buy or sell. They're going to say, well, look, I, give me the mom. God going to forgive me. But they're going to be tormented for many, many, many fires because they took the mark of the beast. That's a credit card that you don't want, baby. You don't want to be tormented because you partook of something that God told you don't take. God knows my heart. I keep telling you until you give him your heart, you ain't got nothing. I'm asking for many of you to give God your heart. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time to give God your heart. Uh -huh. Yeah. Because see, once you give him your heart, he said, rend your heart. Don't worry about your clothes. Because I'm coming back for a holy church. Now, is everybody going to go? No, and the Bible says it's going to be a great falling away. And people are going to leave God. And you can't compare this church with any other church. Because somebody make you shout off a of green peas. You're going to be all right. You better hit your knees and find yourself where God would have you to be. Drop the mic, somebody. It's obvious that God got something for you. The devil's job is this. Kill. Steal. Destroy. But Jesus said... I come in the volume of the book. I come that you might have life and life and life and life more abundantly. Come on, somebody. I need to get filled one more time. I can't get thrilled no more. I need God on the inside working on the outside. I need him moving all over me. 
I'm here to represent him. I'm here to reproduce myself, to be like him. The devil say, you can't be like him. I say, why not? It's the best thing in the world that can ever happen to any man, any woman, any boy, any girl, any child. I'm going to be like him. Well, how's that going to happen, brother preacher? Because I'm going into a certain place with God. I, is that in 1 Corinthians? Hallelujah. Let's go there. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We about to be changed. 1 Corinthians 15. Oh, Lord. I feel my help coming up in here. And it's coming like a whirlwind. Oh, Lord. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross. Am I going to get 1 Corinthians 15? Pastor? 1545? All right, let's go there. I mean, I'm starting to feel this thing. I came back down now. Huh. I heard it said like this, we shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Y'all see 51? Read. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump of God shall sound, and the dead shall be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be called up to meet him in the air who am I talking to if I'm not talking to you you ain't gonna say nothing but I'm talking to somebody maybe you out there are you ready to be caught up to meet him in the air those that sleep tell them to sleep on now take your rest but I'm going with Jesus. I'm going with the author and the finisher of my faith. Come on, somebody. Somebody shout glory to God. Hey, Lord. Hey, Lord. Hey, Lord. Hey, Lord. Hey, Lord. Mm. You mean to tell me that Jesus is going to come back in a moment uh, in a twinkling of an eye at the sound of the trumpet my God that's when Revelations chapter 10 came in place one foot was on the earth the other foot was on the sea and I'm here to tell somebody, when God is getting ready to come back for his church, as a little boy, I saw him. And every time I dreamed about him, he came down from glory. And one foot hit the earth and the other foot hit the sea. And as soon as he touched down, I shot up in the air. Then he came down again, and I was stuck on the earth. I didn't move, but people were moving up all around me. I said, God, don't leave me down here. I seen it again. And the next time, when that foot hit the earth, and then it hit the sea, I shot up. Somebody say, caught up. I'm going to meet him in the air. 
Somebody shout glory to God. It's time to get caught up. Shout glory to God. I can't stay down here. I got to go where he is. And the Bible says when you come to him, you got to come like you are. For the Bible says he that cometh to God must first believe that he is and that he's a reward to them that diligently seek him. Are there any seekers in the house? Are there any reachers in the house? Are there any here that's going to be caught up? To meet him in the air. Somebody shout glory to God. <laughs> you know some things of God. I saw that. And as he began to put those scriptures. In my spirit. I began to tell him thank you. I'm going to eat that little book. I'm going to eat that little book. I'm going to take it out of the angel's hands. Somebody say, take it out of the angel's hands. It's going to be sweet. In your mouth. But when you start doing the will of God, you're going to be persecuted. You're going to be lied on. You're going to be mistreated. You're going to be talked about. You're going to be rejected. All oh, people are going to try to stone you. But at the same time, keep eating the book until you eat it all up. Somebody say, eat the whole thing. And when you get to the end of it, the will of God will be done. Let the church say amen. So be it. Everybody say amen. Everybody say amen. Everybody say amen. 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 Everybody say amen. Everybody say amen. Everybody say amen. 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 Everybody say amen. Everybody say amen. Everybody say amen. 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 Now, those of you that say amen to God, amen. know that he loves you. Don't you ever give up on God because he's never going to give up on you. He loves you. And I want you to press your way continually up the King's Highway. Don't let the enemy cause you to fall down and not have what you need to have so that he could get the glory out of your life. I love him. Why do I love him? Because he first loved me. He never gave up on me. Just like he never gave up on me, he's not going to give up on you. I want you to know that it ain't over till God says it's over. And sometimes people say, where's well, it's over. You said it was over. God said, I'm just beginning. I got a work to do. And anytime you do that work for the kingdom of God, I know that the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, but the violence take it by force. I need some people to get violent and to support this ministry. Keep us on the air until he comes back in the air. Keep us going forward and not back backwards. I need somebody to stand with us in the liberty where with Christ have made us free. I love you, beloved. Let's continue to believe. Let's continue to pray. If you're not saved, say the prayer of salvation. 
If you're not in a church, get in somebody's church that's spirit-filled, as Holy Ghost-filled, and tell them, I'm here because Jesus sent me. And get the Word of God. Eat the little book. And when you eat the book, eat it up. And do the will of God. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. Somebody clap your hands and give him glory in the house.